Good morning, folks. We promised to start promptly at 8.30, and my cell phone tells me it's 8.30. So I would like to say welcome to Creative Convergence 2015. We're so glad that you're all here. We have people from all over the state. I think the first, furthest person besides our speakers today that I know of has come from Sault, uh, Sault Ste. Marie, so that's pretty awesome. Um, so we're really, really excited to have you all here in Washtenaw County at Eastern Michigan University. My name is Deb Pollock, and I am the director of the Arts Alliance, as well as the director of Art Train. I manage both organizations. And um, it's my pleasure to welcome you all on behalf of the Creative Convergence 2015 presenting partners. And those presenting partners are the Arts Alliance, Creative Many Michigan, Culture Source, Eastern Michigan University College of Arts and Sciences, our host for today, and the University of Michigan Penny Stamps Distinguished Lecture Series. We are all very, very pleased to welcome you, especially this early in the morning. We do expect that people will be filling in. We are expecting over the course of the day more than 200 people, so we're excited about that. So just know people will be coming in and out throughout the day. Before we fully get started, let's thank Marissa Kurtzold. I don't know where she went, but she played her music lovely this morning while we were all getting coffee and things. So thank you, Marissa. Where'd she go? Anyway, Melissa, she's great. She's also an Eastern Michigan University graduate, so that's what, wonderful. So we have a, we've planned a jammed pack day to you, for you today. The name of this conference, Creative Convergence, really reflects what the presenting partners hope to accomplish and the experience they hope to provide. Creative Convergence is an issues-based conference focusing on the current hot topics inter impacting and driving the creative sector in Michigan and across the nation. The goal of the conference is to inform, inspire, revital, and revitalize those of us working in Michigan's arts, culture, and creative sector, and as importantly, those in connecting sectors, government, business, education, philanthropy, social services, health, and environment, about the value and impact of Michigan's creative sector. As cities and states across the country look to be competitive in the 21st century, they are investing in their towns to make them appealing and attractive to the creative sector. Why? Because there is a strong correlation between the vibrancy of a town's arts and cultural sector and its appeal as a great place to create, live, work, learn, play, and visit. We, those of us who call Michigan home, should be aware that in order to be competitive, we must do the same. Even in communities long known for their strong arts and cultural offerings, like Ann Arbor, Grand Rapids, and Traverse Cities, City, these towns risk being surpassed if they are complacent and maintain the status quo. You may be thinking that, of course, someone like me, who's made their entire career in the creative sector, would think such a, in this way. <clears throat> You're, you'd be partly correct. While I'm certainly a creative sector advocate, I also know that it takes more than arts and culture to foster and sustain great towns, cities, and states. It takes all the sectors working together. Fortunately, the presenting partners of Creative Convergence agree. It has been a blast to work with Jennifer, Sarah, and Sarah from Creative Many, Lynn and Amy and Claire from Culture Source, Tom and Sally from EMU's College of Arts and Sciences, and Christina from the University of Michigan's Penny Stamp School. And of course, my team and staff and interns, Shoshana, Rachel, Stacy, Allison, Paula, Angela, Carey, and Constance to design Creative Convergence 2015. We put together a robust schedule. We did our best to stack the day with presenters who have a different point of view from what we would call the usual suspects in the creative sector. We built an A to Z team, literally, from across America to Zimbabwe. <clears throat> Purposely, most of our presenters do not work every day in, in the arts. They have, though, found great value in collaborating partnering and participating in arts and culture to further their agendas. We hope you ha have a number of moments that inform, inspire, inspire, and revitalize you today, regardless of what sector you rep represent. So let me prepare you for the day. First of all, everything takes place in this room. You're not going to be going out to breakout sessions. You won't be needing to schlep things around, so that's comfortable. I said everything, everything in this room except the bathrooms. <laughs> the bathrooms are out the hall and to the left. If you get to the information desk, you've gone a little too far, but since they're the information desk, they can point you in the right direction. These are your tables for the entire day. That means um, that, and we, and we purposely have mixed you up. We've got people that are from the arts, sitting with people from government, that are sitting with people from philanthropy and so on and so forth, because we want you to connect with some other people in your field and have some conversations in that way. 
And we've asked someone at each table to observe and during breaks take notes and, and, session, and write down session relevant conversations. Don't worry if you're discussing what you're doing for dinner tonight or your great date last night. They won't put that on record. We just want to have an idea of what resonates with our audience. Will all the table captains raise your hands so we can say thank you for serving it with us today? And if you don't have somebody at your table, yes, thank them, absolutely. If you don't have somebody at your table um, who's in serving that role, raise your hand and one of our staff members um, will bring, make sure that somebody's assigned. Uh, we also have artists from EMU here today um, in the room who are going to record what they see and hear and how they're inspired today. That's the only instruction we've given them. We have no idea what they're going to do, how, what they're going to come up with, but we're really glad that they're here and we look forward to seeing what they, were, what they are going to do. So let's welcome Jermaine Dickerson, Heather Imblay, Kathleen Ivanoff, Aaron Smith, and Todd Runge. Their work will be on display at the end of the day, so please check it out. And while the day is going on, but by all means, go and, 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 and look around. Um, you should have found a program and a pen at your seat when you arrived. The program has the schedule, bios for all the speakers and moderators, some cool infographics to check out, and note pages to use, and very importantly, a double-sided evaluation at the end. Evaluations, we all work in fields, I'm sure that evaluations are important. We ask you to tear out that page at the end of the day and fill it out and leave it on your table, give it to your table captain or give it to a staff member on the way out so we can get an idea of, of how this worked for you. The program also has very important, uh, a very important list of people and, those, and, and organizations and those are our generous sponsors. The National Endowment for the Arts, Michigan Council for Arts and Cultural Affairs, Washtenaw County, the Masco Foundation, the Ann Arbor Area Community Foundation, the Ypsilanti Area Convention and Visitors Bureau, Abso Pure Springwater, Ann Arbor Spark, and Real Estate One Realtor and Arts Alliance Board Member Merrill Guerra. Let's give them a loud round of applause. <laughs> it is indeed because of them that we were able to keep our ticket prices low so more people could come. Um, we also want to welcome Detroit Public Television, who's here in the room today, and they are live streaming um, this program. Um, well, they're live streaming it, so they're streaming it right now. And they're also, because they're streaming it, they're taping it, and that means that we'll be able to have all the session speakers' um, sessions available on our YouTubes and websites in, in, the, in the future. So we're really grateful for DPTV for coming out here and welcome everybody in the, uh, in the audience that may be listening to us um, on their, on their um, devices. Um, and speaking of that, uh, throughout the day there will be opportunities for some questions from the audience. Um, we do need to have those through the microphone, which is going to be placed a little bit over there. Right now it's here. But you have to use the microphone for your questions. We uh, know a lot of you are trained theatrically, but today that doesn't count because we need to have it for the audio, audio portion of this. So thank you. Um, let's see. So let me tell you about our presenting format. We structured the day that everyone stays here. I already mentioned that. We're, um, and it's a packed agenda. So that's important to know too. We've been so fortunate that we've had so many outstanding speakers um, accept our invitation. You know, you throw a lot of invitations out there, you expect a lot of people are going to say no, but we had such a great turnout and we wanted to fit them all in, so we're really grateful for those that said yes. Um, so, except for two sessions, um, Sarah Triplett's update on Creative State Michigan and the Fair Brothers lunch session, each session is going to be about 30 minutes long. One of the presenting partners, Lynn Fryman, Christina Hamilton, Sarah Triplett, Tom Venner, or I will introduce each speaker. And then the speaker will then make their presentation. Following each presentation, the audience will be given a few minutes. You're encouraged to use that time to discuss the topic that was just presented at your table. Um, write down questions that you might have on the index cards that are on the table. Those index cards and those questions will be gathered throughout the day and they will come into play as we move into our last session of the day. But um, you know, it's a comfortable time. You can get up and walk around during that period of time and uh, use those few seconds or a few minutes in between. During our last session today, we're bringing all the speakers back onto the stage for what we're calling our living room conversation. <clears throat> and this will be a moderated conversation by Diana Wong, and those questions that you'll be presenting to or collecting throughout the day will be used somewhat during, those, during that session. Of course, there's always exceptions to every rule. 
three of our speakers, Mike Finney, Nathan Triplett, and Saki Mafundikwa, will not be able to stay for the entire session. So they will have their their speakers will be asked to. Um, uh, I'm sorry, their moderators will, if there's time, take questions from the audience right then and there. <clears throat> now this is very important. I said our schedule is jam-packed. We do not have any scheduled breaks in the morning or the afternoon. So please, please, please know that the captain has turned off the seatbelt sign and you are free to move around the cabin <clears throat> throughout the day. That, that means if you need to get up in the middle of a session and go do a little dance in the back room, by all means do that. If you need to get up during something and move around, that's entirely up to you. Um, we will not take any offense to that. We will, however, take offense if you pick up your cell phone and make a phone call. So please don't do that. Um, fortunately or unfortunately, depending how you look at it, the cell reception in this room isn't very great anyway, so you may as well just turn your phone off right now because you're not going to get a call anyway, but we don't want the phone to ring. Okay, are you ready? Let's get started with session number one. <clears throat>